order the regular council meeting of November 14, 2011. Mr. Spagna, would you please call the roll? Allen? Here. Dixon? Here. Gibbons? Here. Hannon? Present. Harrison? Present. McLean? Here. Mowry? Here. O'Brien? Payton? Seven. Seven members present. This time, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time, I'd like to turn to chair announcements. An executive session of council was conducted on October 24, 2011. Uh, contract negotiation by the contract negotiation subcommittee and tonight November 14 2011 before we came out labor negotiations police personnel issues in personnel issues at this time I'd like to turn to the reports of the officials and the librarians reports report good evening my name is Christine I'm the director at the public library where we provide services to inform inspire and enrich the community um, Kindle owners will be happy to know that now you can download ebooks to your Kindle from the library's catalog. Up until this time, we had Sony e readers, the Kobo, the Nook, the iPad, the iPhone, but Kindle was the last holdout and they have come on. We currently have 3,500 ebook titles across the county. We're adding more constantly. We also have downloadable e audio books, um, some e videos, and we recently purchased as a county some Disney videos that you can download. <clears throat> a few upcoming programs I'd like to tell you about. There's one tomorrow, Tuesday the 15th at 1 o'clock. It's called Finishing Well, Five Wishes Living Will, which is a popular living will uh, that deals with your personal, emotional, and spiritual needs as well as your medical wishes. And on Wednesday, November 30th, from 1.30 to 4.30, counselors from APPRISE, which is the State Health Insurance Assistance Program, will be at the library to conduct individual appointments to assist seniors with assessing their Medicare coverage options for this open enrollment season. We have our annual Gingerbread House Family Workshop on Saturday, December 3rd. You can drop in anytime from 12 to 4. We'll supply the milk carton and the graham crackers for the structure. We ask that you bring a can of icing and a bag of candy to decorate your gingerbread house. And while it isn't quite the dunk tank, it can often be as humiliating. The staff Christmas play will take place on Sunday, December 11th at 2 o'clock. You can come watch your favorite librarians perform, sometimes very badly for you. <laughs> And then afterwards, we do some ornament making. We have refreshments. And this year, we will have piano music by our very own librarian, Jimmy Huttenhauer, so it's not to be missed. This will be held at the community center. We do it over there, so we have lots of room and a great stage. Uh, we ask that you register just so we have enough refreshments for everybody. Fundraising, we just sent out our annual fund drive appeal. This, this year, it went out by email. If you did not get one, you can get a form at the library or on the library's website. So please consider the library for your year-end giving. And also, since it's Christmas time, I just want to remind everybody about our gift books program. If you have a teacher, a child, a family member, a friend that you would like to um, get a gift for and you don't know what to get them, you can, you can purchase a book in their honor from the library. For a $25 donation, you get a book plate. It has that person's name and also who it's given by. Um, so remember that. And just a final reminder, the library will close at 5 o'clock on Wednesday, November 23rd, and will be closed Thursday, the 24th, for the Thanksgiving holiday. We will reopen Friday morning, and we'll be there throughout the weekend. So if you're sick of Christmas shopping, come by, grab a magazine, sit near the fireplace, and enjoy a few minutes of quiet. So if you need any other information on these programs or services that we offer at the library, you can call us or visit our website at BethelParkLibrary.org. Any questions? I, I think the manager uh, would volunteer. For we the have play. a singing part, Bill. He would you is like quite it? the crooner. <laughs> That's what I've heard. <clears throat> Tim's always trying to get you in trouble. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. We turn to the police chief's report and Chief Mackey. Thank you, Mr. Mowry. Good evening, everyone. I um, I'm pleased. I ha actually have a, a number of guests here this evening. And uh, both groups that I'm going to introduce here shortly come bearing gifts. So I thought it would be a, a nice thing for them to uh, get the credit they deserve and um, uh, show up tonight for the meeting. The 
Um, the first two ladies I would like to call up are Deb Shebatoris and Karen Sable. And um, just as a little background, I've known Deb for uh, quite a few years now. And Deb called me, turn around so everybody could see you. Thanks. Uh, Deb called me uh, a, a few weeks ago and um, she wanted to bring Karen along. They do a program, um, which they can explain, but uh, they offered pet first aid kits for the first responders in Bethel Park. And I know they're going, going to give those to me as the representative of the police department, but this is also going to benefit our brothers in the fire department and also the EMS services. So Dave, why don't you come up too, since you represent the fire department. And um, Deb, I'll turn it over to you and you can explain why you're here tonight. Okay. Um, my name is Deb Chebatoris. I'm the um, owner and uh, the operator of Chartier's Custom Pet Cremation in Bridgeville, Pennsylvania. Um, back in, well, let me just say that losing a pet is very sad. If you've had their companionship for a long time in your life, um, it's, it's a horribly sad thing. It's even worse if you lose a pet that is young. And back in May, I had a host of families who had lost pets to accidental deaths. And while I was trying to figure out if there was anything that I could do to make a difference, um, Karen Sable walked into my door. Her, her pet, uh, uh, Snowball, of 19 years had passed away, and she and I were talking about arrangements for Snowball. And during that time of discussion, she told me that she had recently retired and was now a pet first aid instructor. And it was like, wow, is, this is something that I could do to, to possibly help the community. So um, Karen and I, through discussions, had put together a number of first aid classes, one of which was held here, um, actually in this room, through the auspices of the library. Um, and we had uh, over 30 people. So if you look around, as many people as are in here today um, attended that first aid class. Um, at, throughout the, the class, Karen teaches things that you can use, and she says, in your first aid kit, you should have da-da-da-da. So at the end of the class, I had um, offered to people who had presented a, a little first aid kit. And it, it, has some, upside down, it has some of the things that Karen had suggested that, that they could use. And it was, the class was free, the first aid kit was free, but people offered donations. Um, so we're like, okay, this is great. Karen, every time she teaches a class and people pay her for that, but when she does, she uses a percentage of her um, proceeds to buy these oxygen kits, or oxygen mask kits for first responders. And what they are, they're oxygen masks that can be put over muzzles of dogs and cats so that if they need to get oxygen, it makes a good seal and it actually gives them a, a, a good dose of oxygen. So these are available through um, a company, it's called Wagon, and they do um, a, a discounted rate for first responders. So Karen's hooked into that because there's so many things to tell. I'm sorry, I'm trying to go quickly. She um, responds to... Uh, uh, crises like um, uh, Katrina. So she's involved in that whole area and had been before she was even retired and into her, her teaching first aid. So she had the availability of getting these kits and we had extremely generous people who came to the first aid class and so because they were so generous every dollar that they donated at, during the first aid class we used to buy these two kits. So. Thank you for listening to a very long story. Um, I think Bethel Park has a lot of pet owners, and I hope that they'll be happy to know that these things are now available to help their pets. Um, in Bridgeville, we just had a fire um, over Labor Day, and, and a dog died of uh, smoke inhalation. So who knows, you know, if something like that happens, maybe, you know, they'll be able to help you. So thank you. Thank you. I've got a terrible cold. That's why I'm okay. <laughs> Well, well, you can give that one to the fire chief, and uh, just uh, thank you very much. Thanks for thinking of the first responders, and uh, it, it's nice to have them. I hope we never have to use them. And thank you again to the library for letting us use this space. It was wonderful. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, at this time, I would like to call up our crime prevention and community resource officer, Tom Rigatti, and Tom also has a guest, Tom Zabilski. I hope I pronounced that correctly, or at least close, and Tom is with Guardian Protection Services. And as you drive around the Bethel Park community, you may see a number of these Bethel Park Crime Watch signs uh, throughout the community. Well, we partnered with Guardian about 10 years or so ago, and Guardian provided the funds that we could have these signs made up. Well, it's 10 years later, and a number of the signs have faded. Uh, some of them were damaged, and we also wanted to increase the number of signs that we had out in the community because, as I've spoken to you over the last several months, we're trying to increase participation in Crime Watch in the community, and that's going very well. Uh, we're getting closer to our goal of 1,000 Crime Watch captains by the end of the year. We're up around 700 now. Uh, it was an ambitious project, and, and we're getting there. Um, but anyhow, uh, Guardian Protection um, donated $2,400 towards having these signs made, and that provided 75 new signs for the community. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace all the worn out and damaged signs uh, with the new ones. Uh, I think they turned out very nice. I don't know if council got a chance to see it. I'm sorry. I'll <laughs> turn it around and show council. Um, and uh, we're, we'll get with Mr. Sagrimis and the road crew to get these signs posted. Um, that was a surprise for Bob. He wasn't aware of that. <laughs> did did but, we budget for that? <laughs> Uh, but anyhow, uh, I don't know if Tom or Tom have anything they'd like to say, but, um, you know, before they do, I just want to say this is a perfect example of partnering with different people in the community to make good things happen. So I'll turn it over to Officer Rigatti first. Yeah, I just want to thank Guardian Protection for uh, undertaking the, this project with us. Uh, they, like the Chief said, it, they partnered with us 10 years ago, and... Uh, they were more than willing to help us get this going and give us the signs to keep the project uh, alive in Bethel Park. And the new design is nice. It's got the orange. kind of blends in with all the school's colors. But one of the things I can tell you right now, I, I, I'm sure they can hear me, is that, um, you know, about 10 years ago is when this all started. And we were one of the first, Bethel, you know, the community here was one of the first we partnered with. We do this all over the country. But it's, I work every day to save people's lives. It's kind of a neat business to be in, just like you fellows. Um, it, it just makes us happy to be part of the community. And we want to thank you for this partnership. We're honored to have a partnership this long as well. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I think it was last month or the month before I... I uh, especially thanked Officer Rigatti. He's the one that usually gets me prepared for the meetings with all these items to talk about. And uh, I asked him today if he would, since he was going to be here tonight, if he'd like to come and basically do all the presentations, and he declined. He said he's a bit camera shy. So um, we have a couple other crime prevention related activities. I already mentioned the Crime Watch captains. Uh, we are still recruiting, and we would like to have more people sign up, and you can do so by giving Officer Rigatti a call here at the station, 412-831-6800, extension 104. Or you can email Officer Rigatti, and actually you can email any member of the police department. It's very easy. Our email addresses are our first initial, last name at BethelParkPolice.net. That's all one word, BethelParkPolice.net. So uh, if you're so inclined, please sign up for Crime Watch. We are still accepting applications for the Citizens Police Academy and law enforcement apprenticeship programs. The first class for both programs is Wednesday, January 18th and the classes will run for 12 consecutive weeks. 
The program for the high school students is uh, conducted at the school district, and the program for the adult class is conducted at Tri-Community South EMS. This year's food drive is quickly upon us. Uh, we are going to start on Monday, November 28th, and that will run until Wednesday, December 14th. Uh, once again, if anybody is interested in helping out with the program, you can contact Officer Rigatti. Um, we are also encouraging people to participate in the Adopt a Family program. Uh, all the families that are adopted at this time, this special time of year, are Bethel Park residents. So if you adopt a family, um, you can be assured that your money and your efforts are going to help one of your neighbors. The officers, along with volunteers, are going to be collecting food on Saturday, December 10th. And they're going to do that outside the Giant Eagle on Route 88. Also, Shop and Save on Route 88 and Walmart. And uh, finally, uh, just a special thank you to General Manager Dan Clunan. Dan is the um, General Manager at the Giant Eagle Market District. And what Dan does every year is he donates candy for the police officers to pass out on Halloween. But we also have other special events at South Hills Village and um, uh, South Park Shops. And I think there's one more. And at Home Depot. And it's always nice for the officers to pass out uh, candy to the children. And Dan at Giant Eagle, they've been terrific over the years. And once again, so just wanted to say a special thank you to Dan and Giant Eagle. And that is my report, Mr. Mallory. Thank you very much. We turn to the fire chief's report. Good evening. My name is Dave Gerber. I'm the assistant fire chief for the Bethel Park Volunteer Fire Company. In the month of October, the Bethel Park Volunteer Fire Company ran 32 calls. Uh, we had four fires, uh, one rescue, nine hazardous condition calls, one service call, eight good intent calls, and nine false alarms. Uh, Chief asked me to mention a couple things to you tonight. Um, last weekend, we changed our clocks, turned the clocks back. Everybody should have got an extra hour of sleep. It was nice. Uh, this is the time of year we recommend that if you have any carbon monoxide alarms, any smoke alarms, that you change the batteries uh, in those. Um, even if you have uh, units to plug in, a lot of CO alarms, uh, CO detectors are plug-in types. We recommend that... Uh, you still change, they normally have a backup battery. We recommend that you change that also uh, every time we change the clocks back. So if you haven't done that yet, it's a good idea to go ahead and do that. Um, also, it's getting to be that time of year when people are going to start putting up uh, Christmas lights uh, and it's starting to get colder. Um, people are going to be using space heaters and stuff to help warm their homes and all. Um, if you do, we recommend that you use the right sized extension cord and you do not plug too many sets of Christmas lights uh, in a row. I believe normally if you read the packages, I think they tell you don't plug any more than three strands in end to end uh, for your Christmas lights hanging outside. Uh, most people run a, an extension cord or whatever to those Christmas lights. It's a good idea to make sure you have the proper sized extension cord, number one. And before you lay the extension cord out uh, through the yard and hang it up where you might get water or something. It's a good idea to check the insulation around the outside to make sure you don't have any cracks uh, or any problems with the extension cord. Every year we get one or two calls where uh, extension cords are run through mulch and because there's a crack in the insulation or whatever, it happens to catch the mulch on fire or bushes on fire out front or whatever. So it's always a good idea to check uh, before you start plugging those things in, leaving them out. Like I said, unfortunately, it's the time of year where it starts snowing. You can get water into the cords real easy. Uh, it makes uh, a mess. And also, like I said, with the space heaters, you want to make sure that you have the proper sized uh, extension cord. And it's always a good idea to check when you buy an extension cord that they're UL rated, Underwriters Laboratory. Uh, it'll have a little UL sticker uh, on it to make sure that it's proper and uh, not a junky extension cord or whatever. So, 
it's always good to check those things out. Uh, also, it's that time of year, like I said, it's getting cold. If you have a chimney, you're going to start using your fireplace or you have a wood burning stove, it's always a good idea to have once a year have your chimney checked uh, by a qualified chimney sweep. You can look in the yellow pages uh, and find a qualified chimney sweep to uh, come out and check your fireplace before you start using it. Uh, one last thing, if you haven't donated yet, uh, we're still accepting donations for our fund drive this year. Uh, you can drop a check off to the Brightwood Fire Station if you're still looking or interested in donating, or you can go online to our website, which is BethelParkVFC.com, uh, and you can look down the left-hand side, and it'll tell you how to donate. It'll give you our address, or you can donate right online using uh, your credit card or whatever you need. So if you'd like to still donate, we'd appreciate it uh, greatly. Other than that, I believe that's all I have. Questions, comments, problems? Any questions? Hearing okay. none, thank you very much. If we can turn to the mayor's report and Mayor Morton. Thank you, Chief. See you Saturday. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good to see you here. Nice crowd tonight. Why are you all here? I can guess. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, we do have three or four items we want to get through tonight. We're going to begin tonight with uh, Pastor K. Stepp. Pastor Stepp is uh, over at South Hills Assembly of God, and they've got a program over there called Compassion Connections, and Kay came to us last year and talked a little bit about it, and she's going to talk about it for a few minutes tonight. So jump right in there, Pastor. Thank you. It's a delight to be here tonight, and Compassion Connection has a wonderful program called Toy Treasures at Christmas time, and uh, that's what we talked about last year, and we're going to talk about it again to, uh, tonight. I love Christmas. I love, I love all the hub, uh, you know, hubbub around Christmas. I love being with friends and family. I love giving gifts, but there are others around us who aren't as fortunate and they dread Christmas because of the recession and how that's affected them. And we have a program through Compassion Connection called Toy Treasures where we're able to help those families. Last year we helped uh, 300 children at the site at South Hills Assembly and another site, 200, over 200 children. So there were over 500 children that we served through Toy Treasures. There are collection boxes all around the city and all around the area. Um, here at the municipal building, the library, and the community center, we have collection boxes. There are collection boxes of many, at many businesses, EV Hardware, Miller Hardware, Don's Appliances, many different places that you can drop off toys. And uh, then um, th also you can give cash donations, either going to our website, www.compassionconnectioninc.org or calling us at 412-835-8900, extension 104, and we can give you instructions on how you can, can uh, give cash donations. You say, why would you need cash donations? Well, what we do is we register the children, we register the families, actually, the parents, and they tell us the ages of their children. And if we see that there are gaps, then we purchase toys. For instance, if there aren't enough toys for the 12-year-old boys, then we go out, purchase toys that would be appropriate for that age group so that we can fill in those gaps. So that's what we do with the cash donations. So it's a wonderful, wonderful day on, on December 17th uh, that we will be doing the distribution. Last year, we had a lady who came who was uh, spoke with a, a very... Um, definite accent. She had five children under the age of six and um, was had twins that were babies and was wondering how she could ever supply Christmas gifts for her children. She was in tears as we each child gets three, three gifts, so she picked out the gifts. And um, at the wrapping station, they were wrapping all 15 of the gifts, and um, she was in tears saying, I don't know how we would have been able to have Christmas in her very broken English if we had not had toy treasures. It's that kind of story. Another lady named Angel came through, and um, they said, oh, what a beautiful name, Angel. And she said, oh, no, you're the angels. I want you to know that because I could not have had Christmas for my children. And she was crying as, she, as they carried the toys out to her car. She was crying and hugged them and said, thank you, thank you, thank you for, for providing these toys for our children. It's that kind of thing. That Bethel Park, are, you're, you're wonderful people, <laughs> and you give so generously when there are needs, and I know this year again that you're going to be able to um, 
come to the rescue of these famu- families and be able to bless them at Christmas time. It's one of my favorite, favorite uh, events of the year to be able to bless the children. And um, uh, the workers, we, we have between 55 and 65 uh, workers that day, volunteers that help with that um, wonderful event. So we invite you to be a part of it. If you know of families who could be blessed by this, let us know their names. Um, I've given you that phone number and that website, and um, you can let, the, let us know those names, and we'd be glad to get those uh, invitations out to those families. So God bless you, and have a wonderful Thanksgiving and Christmas. This isn't the only program that <clears throat> goes on over there at Assembly of God. They have a wonderful outreach program over there, and they help a lot of people with a lot of different kinds of problems, and we really appreciate you being here. Happy birthdays. We recognize every month our elder seniors, and tonight we want to wish happy birthday to Gertrude Lambert. Gertrude is 91 years old this year, and Elsie Juskowicz, Gladys Wilkes, Cecilia Spernak and Lois Manning are all turning 93 this month. So happy birthday to those ladies as well. Gene Shannon and Ed Fassel will be 94 this year. I ran into Ed in church the other day, and uh, he looks great. And is doing fine, as I'm sure the rest of these folks are. And our eldest one this year is, uh, or this month, is Julia Heltopedia uh, Piedi. And she's 95. So happy birthday to all these folks, and may they live to see another birthday. A um, couple of things um, coming up late up night on the 5th of uh, December over at the community center, as always. We'll do light up night, but we're adding a little kick to it this year. We're going to also be dedicating our time capsule for the anniversary we celebrated this summer. So that will be on the same evening. and. Hope you all can come out to make that. I can't wait to see librarians on the chorus line. (laughs) What was that date again? December 11th. The 11th. December 11th. 11th. (laughs) We'll be there. We'll be there. And I think if I'm not forgetting anything, that's all we have tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mayor. Okay, this time we turn to the approval of the minutes and Mr. Allen. I move that we approve the regular council meeting minutes of October 10th, 2011. Second. There's a motion and second to approve the regular council meeting minutes of October 10th, 2011. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Spagna, would you please call the roll? Dixon? Yes. Givens? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Harrison? Yes. McLean? Yes. Mowry? Yes. Allen? Yes. Motion passes 7-0, Mr. Allen. Next item is public hearing of October 24th, 2011. Transfer of Liquor License, SAWA Steakhouse, Inc. I move that we approve the minutes of the public hearing of October 24th, 2011. Transfer of Liquor License, SAWA Steakhouse, Inc. Second. There's a motion to second to approve the minutes of the public hearing of October 24th, 2011. Transfer of Liquor License, SAWA Steakhouse, Inc. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Spino, would you please call the roll? Givens? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Harrison? Yes. McLean? Yes. Maori? Yes. Allen? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Sorry. Motion passes 7 0, Mr. Allen. Next item is a public hearing of October 24th, 2011, transfer of liquor license, Jeff Wilkins, LLC. I move that we approve the minutes of the public hearing of October 24th, 2011. Transfer of liquor license, Jeff Wilkins, LLC. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve the minutes of the public hearing of October 24th, 2011. Transfer of liquor license, Jeff w- slash Wilkins, LLC. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Spagnol, would you please call the roll? Cannon? Yes. Harrison? Yes. McLean? Yes. Maury? Yes. Allen? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Givens? Yes. yes. Motion passes 7-0, Mr. Allen. Now the next one is the third public hearing of October 24th, 2011, and that's the 2012 municipal budget. I move that we approve the meeting minutes of the public hearing of October 24th, 2011, 
the 2012 municipal budget. Second. There's a motion to second to approve the meeting minutes of the public hearing of October 24th, 2011, the two th in 2012 municipal budget. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Spagno, would you please call the roll? Harrison? Yes. McLean? Yes. Mowry? Yes. Allen? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Seven. Motion passes 7 0. This time, I'd like to turn to the approval of the bills and payrolls and Mr. Allen. I move that we approve the bills and payrolls for the municipality per bill list number 111411 in the amount of $1,243,609.85. Second. There's a motion to second to approve the bills and payrolls for the municipality per bill list number 111411 in the amount of $1,243,609.85. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Spagno, would you please call the roll? McLean? Yes. Mowry? Yes. Allen? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Harrison? No. I mean, yes, excuse me, yes. <laughs> Motion. Yeah, jump one ahead. Passes 7 0. <laughs> okay, at this time, I'd like to turn to the resident comment section for non agenda items. We have a three minute limit. If you'd like to come up to the microphone and state your name and address. Okay, you're signed up under, you can speak now or under the. Budget. Okay. Okay. At this time, I'd like to turn to general policy and finance, and Mr. Hannon, and we have one resident signed up to two residents signed up to speak. First being Ron Workmeister uh, for, I guess, the budget, which would be item B and C on the agenda. If you'd like to come to the microphone, state your name and address. We have a three-minute limit. At the end of two minutes, they'll signify. Hey, Ron Workmeister. 4750 Robert Drive, Buffalo Park, lived there for 29 years. Uh, I'm here about the budget because I was sleeping last month and didn't realize about the budget, so I'm sorry I wasn't here, but uh, at least I was informed that there was one. We don't get cable and everything else. So uh, making it quick, uh, the biggest thing here is I've heard the percent increase, which was broken down. I know that there's uh, two-thirds of the budget is based on the uh, wage tax and one-third is based off of the property tax, but I'm hearing that there's a proposed 57 point some percent increase of the wage tax uh, which I mean I'm sorry of the uh, the real estate tax okay so the real estate tax that's a very big increase and what we have is people right now especially in this era right now this year and last year talking with people and just knowing uh, friends and that this is the worst time to be talking about another tax increase we're being faced right now with reassessments coming there's a lot of us that are on the other side of uh, 88 where we're talking about that watershed. There's a $6 billion sewer thing that they're talking about. I read in the paper just the other day. Uh, we can go on about the hardships that are being bestowed on all these people, especially people on fixed incomes or worse, uh, you know, like they're retired and, I mean, they're really in a tight bind. So uh, what I was looking at is the details of the budget. and. I have a bunch of different sheets here, so I'll try to make it quick. It's hard to do that when you've got you know, these many items on the budget, but without going into much detail, uh, there was a proposed budget from 2011, uh, revenues that you guys were predicting, I guess, going from 2011 into 2012, and that came out to about a 14.86% increase from 16 uh, million, I guess, to 18 million. Um, on this sheet here. Now, if this is correct or incorrect, I don't know that. I just know what I have in front of me. So uh, that seems to be a pretty big increase in the budget compared to previous years. Also, uh, looking at uh, some of the things here that's coming up, we have, I hear word of arbitration is coming up. There's a, a big unknown as to what's going to happen. I hear that uh, it seems like they're pretty free with the money on the uh, uh, union things um, like for example I uh, hear that they're paying very little if any health care and that's not an industry standard I know myself and anybody I talk to that works at a place of business their health care has been going up and they do pay in their health care and six weeks vacation is what I heard maybe rumor I don't know but if that's true that seems like a big thing so the point being is if we're in such a tight bind right now and if there is this arbitration and we're looking at if these are truly things that are happening we, we have to make cuts across the whole board and what I'm seeing on the budget was modest increases like 5%, 6% and things like that. And some were some de decreases uh, so it's trying to balance it out but for whatever reason with us, is that three minutes already? 
Oh, geez. <laughs> so um, the other thing I just wanted to, well, I don't know if I can go talk about it because there's a few other things on here, but uh, the reserves. Uh, for, for us hitting the reserves, that seems to be, I know it's nice for those that are living in the borough right now, but when they move out and somebody else moves in, they're going to be faced with a huge uh, problem trying to pay back these reserves too. So I won't talk about the other things, but <laughs> anyhow, that's my point. So I had some people here from work and are interested in this as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have one other resident signed up to speak, Dino Bello, on the budget item. Yeah. Once again, if you can step to the microphone and say your name and address. Yeah, I don't dance as fast as some of you people do. I need to clean, you know. So I'll get up to the microphone. You can sit a chair there, Dino, and get, take this microphone walk down. Walk You've done that before. I just don't move fast, that's all. Okay. My name is Dino Bello. I live at 3339 Alterton Drive in Bethel Park. Uh, our whole family's here. My wife's buried in Bethel Park Cemetery right across from that new high school. My kids graduated from Bethel Park High School. All of my grandkids are in the Bethel school system. Another one will be graduating this year. Get on beyond that. Uh, I talked to about several thousand people over the last month and uh, a question kept popping up from these people out there and it was touched on a lot of what Ron was talking about here, this tax increase of 57 point percent, I guess that's what's proposed. I want to figure out how you guys are going to try to weasel out of, out of that thing. I mean, you're going to do it. So the other question that kept coming up, the people asking me, they says, Dino, why didn't they televise that meeting? I says, I don't know. They got, and one lady answer says, oh, I know. So they didn't televise it simply uh, because they, they were just afraid of doing it. In other words, they're treating us like mushroom. I says, ma'am, I says, what do you mean by a mushroom? They says, well, you know how they raise mushrooms, don't you? They keep them in the dark, and they throw manure on them. And there's another word for manure, and part of it, first part of that word is these matadors see them in the ring all the time. That's, that's, that's exactly what, what, I, what I heard. This is not a lie. And I heard the story in here just a few minutes ago about the children so happy of getting toys for Christmas. I appreciate what the pastor said, and I'm in, in agreement on that there, but talk to these seniors who are on fixed income, and a couple hundred dollars to them is one heck of a lot of money. Now, I saw the comment in the almanac saying, well, what are we going to do, cut out picking up half the garbage? Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, cut out solving right. half of the crimes? I forget what the other thing was. Solving half the crimes, that's silly. That's silly. He said, that's silly, that's nonsense. And then I, I'm thinking back of, of what, what I've heard said on this council floor. I think it's in one of your old minutes. They said, well, a lot of people talk out of both sides of their mouth, so I'm going to buy them two dinners, one for this side of the mouth and one for that side of the mouth. Let's see what side of the mouth you're going to talk about tonight. That 57% is huge to a senior who's living paycheck to paycheck, really, 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 really striving to make it. How about the growing young families who've got kids and that, are, and that are, can't even buy candy? Someone can't buy food. This is enormous. And I, guys, somebody dropped the ball here. And... They don't like it, and I don't like it, and I think it's, it's time we wake up and smell the coffee, guys. I can hear that, 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 that beeper there, but I can also hear how I feel, my passion of how I feel about this tax increase for seniors and growing families. It stinks. It stinks. Think about it, guys. You're, you're, just, you're just shooting yourselves in the foot. Go ahead and shoot yourself. I hope this is being recorded so people can look at your intelligent answers that you give of why you're not going to pick up the rest of the garbage, fix the rest of the streets, and shovel the rest of the snow. You can figure it out. You're smart guys or you wouldn't be sitting up there. That's all I got to say. There's a lot of people that are hurting in this community. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. If we can turn to uh, general policy and finance and Mr. Hannon. Uh, there's a few items. First item is the, uh, an ordinance for the non-police employee pension plan amendment. I move that we approve the ordinance relative to the amendment of the non-police employee pension plan for the purpose of compliance with the Internal Revenue Code requirements. Second. 
There's a motion and a second that we approve the ordinance relative to amendment of the non-police employee pension plan for the purpose of compliance with internal revenue uh, code requirement. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Spagnuolo, would you please call the roll? Mowry? Yes. Allen? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Givens? Yes. Cannon? Yes. Harrison? Yes. McLean? Yes. Seven. Motion passes 7-0, <clears throat> Mr. Hannon. The next item is an ordinance fixing the 2012 real estate tax rate. I move that we approve the ordinance fixing the tax rate for real estate taxes at 2.93 mills for the fiscal year 2012 for the municipality of Bethel Park. Second. There's a motion and a second. We approve the ordinance fixing the tax rate for real estate taxes at 2.93 mills for the fiscal year 2012 for the municipality of Bethel Park. At this time, I'd like to uh, pass the gavel, Mr. Allen. Uh, just giving a couple, uh, some, some overview from our perspective and kind of what's going on and maybe answer some of the questions that uh, people came to the microphone tonight. I think last year when we adopted the budget, uh, we, we kind of talked about that 2011 was going to be a very lean year for us. We faced about a 4.62% decline in revenues, which equates out to about $775 million that we were projecting from 2010 to 2011. So that's where this kind of all started. And, and we talked about possibly having to adjust something this year or make significant cuts. Where the 1.25 mil increase came was council was always asked staff to look at the budget, plan three, four, five years out where we think we need to be financially. Based on those numbers, uh, we received a budget of 1.25 mil, which is usually always the ceiling of what the staff is recommending or suggesting to council. And it's up to us to really set the direction and really decide where we want to be financially in 2012 and in, in, in years uh, in the future. Uh, I, I would say it's not been an easy process. We've had several meetings. We have followed the same budget process as we've followed in years past. Uh, for the public hearing for Actually, at last month's meeting, we suggested that the budget's available in the public library. If anybody had any questions, to contact their member of council. Every council member was asked if you had any suggestions to get them to us, and let's talk about it. So we've had several meetings to discuss this. Kind of what come out of it uh, tonight, we have looked at anywhere between the 1.25 and the 0.95 increase. Uh, tonight, we kind of talked about, and I proposed, uh, to maybe look a little closer, to look at one year out versus three, four, five years out. And let's see, A, where we can cut the budget, and B, where we'd like to be, where to, to try to lessen the impact on all the homeowners of Bethel Park. Uh, what we decided tonight was a, a consensus of this board that we would go up 0.75 mils versus the 0.95 or the 0.125. On a house that's $116,000 assessed value, which is the average house in Bethel Park, it equates out to $87 a year or $7.25 per month. It's not an easy thing to do. Nobody up here wants to raise taxes, but we weighed what we, the services we provide and what we could afford. We looked from top to bottom. We looked at everything. Uh, some of the costs uh, that we, have, we looked at, we eliminated probably a couple hundred thousand dollars across the board. Uh, we eliminated one public works position. We eliminated one position upcoming in the Bethel Park Police Department. Uh, we are uh, getting out or retiring our canine officers, so we're going to eliminate that. This is just a few of the many things that we looked at during the Bethel Park Chronicles, something that we've had for probably the past 10 years. We're going to look at with the, the advent of the Internet and social media and things like that, as a library does. We've asked staff to put together a program we start communicating via the internet for the people that have internet and that you know maybe in six months we're going to look at it again hopefully we have a, a a system in place that we can notify people even for the people that don't have that we will make copies available for our recreation programs so we've kind of looked at everything what the net result is uh, for the 2012 proposed budget is about a 3.4 percent increase in uh, what our spend rate is. Tied into that is a significant increase in cars uh, from the police cars because they're coming out with a new model have gone from maybe 28,000 to 35,000. And even in this, this, this proposed budget, 
we didn't really cut any type of major capital that's going to directly impact or it's not even going to be a cut it's going to defer paving the roads or buying public works trucks things like that that you know you may cost you a hundred thousand dollars this year for a dump truck you know you're going to spend more in maintenance on the ones you keep and next year it's going to be 130 or 40 so structurally we didn't touch a lot of the capital we made some true what i believe cost and personnel which were kind of ongoing uh, hopefully if the economy turns around you know obviously our, our revenues because two-thirds are de de uh, de derived from the wage tax that maybe we'll see a bigger increase if we were to take away the increase this year excuse me in 2012 on the budget uh, we would go uh, the budgeted revenues were going up about 0.3 percent 0.34 percent so it, it is kind of tough we we're hopefully weathering the storm we're going to get back on the positive side over the next two years and just because we adopt something tonight doesn't mean that it's we're not going to continue to look at the budget on a monthly basis we get quarterly reviews uh, staff has been instructed any major <coughs> capital projects come through us uh, for approval and we're going to continue on a monthly basis to watch the bills and payrolls because that's where it's it's all spent it's not an easy thing to do uh, but it's something I think is prudently uh, fiscally responsible for us to do in order to bow the budget to be able to pay our bills thank you Thank you, Mr. Myers. Mr. Harrison? Uh, I'll uh, speak now uh, to provide uh, you guys with the target to shoot at, which you seem to relish to do. I want to tell the people just a couple of things on the front end. One, <laughs> based on our home rule charter, we must approve our budget in November. I personally think that it's irresponsible to come out here tonight, propose a new millage, which I can tell you I hadn't heard of until 10 minutes before we walked on the floor here and uh, then say we ought to smile and, and, and say that's okay. The other thing I want to point out, and I'm not going to bore you with the numbers, but I did put a spreadsheet up here on the table and I would encourage you to take one and look at it because, uh, as Mr. Barry said, there were several proposals from 1.25 to 0.95, which is the municipality supplied us information with and, and, and I'm not in any sense suggesting that our finance officer Mark Romito uh, took a position on this but I did check with him today and he agrees that the numbers on this table are the numbers that were provided to the governing body and 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 uh, I just want to call your attention to to something if the the so-called option 1d on here which is an increase of 0.95, by 2013 would put the reserve 21.2% less than we have right now. So, you know, it, it's sort of in the national vernacular, we're, we're kicking the can down the, down the road. Uh, we're, you know, it, it, the, the big, uh, the, the, the table says that uh, we expect to have 748,000 dollars reserve uh, with the present millage in 2011 when we go to uh, 0.95 we would have two million one hundred and forty eight thousand and like I say two years later we got 21 percent less than we have this year so clearly there's going to have to be another increase and uh, I uh, my take is that, that, that the, I, I keep being told that, well, the character of the community, there's things we, you know, we don't want to cut. Uh, I, I think the public has to make a decision and communicate to us up here whether they want to continue to have these increases or whether they want to start cutting back on what I call the nice cities, and I've spoken to those many times, so I won't go through that tonight. But one of the things I wanted to do is uh, the reason I made the comment about being a target and uh, taking a shot at. Mr. Uh, Allen shared the, uh, the budget hearing meeting, which was held on uh, October the 24th. And, and, and at that meeting, I thanked the Almanac for publishing the letter which I wrote, which informed people that we're talking about 57.3% uh, increase in real estate taxes 
if we went to the 3.43, which was proposed in the budget uh, by the staff and, and uh, council nodded their head yes. Uh, one of the things that bothers me is that we're, you know, we're getting all these optimistic talk and sitting up here saying we're going to approve a lower number, but, but we didn't bother to, uh, to talk about that at the, at the budget hearing meeting. It seems to me that'd be an appropriate place. But uh, I, I'll just take a few more minutes to tell you that each of these meetings, uh, incidentally, you know, I was just surprised that you were that we didn't have TV at the budget hearing. I think if, if we look back, you'll see that generally speaking, we do have cameras here when we present the budget. But in any case, uh, we record what's going on. So I asked for a verbatim of what went on at the budget hearing. And I, I just want to tell you a couple things in passing. Uh, Mr. Allen authenticated in his comments that the increase was from 2.18 to uh, 3.43. Uh, the proposal, uh, uh, an increase of 57.3%. Uh, uh, Mr. Allen said, we have been doing the budget for quite a few meetings now. In fact, we were a few minutes late coming out tonight because we were still tweaking the differences. Tonight being the 24th when we had the hearing. And I just want to tell you, unless something went on that I didn't know about, and as far as I know, I attend all the meetings. We had two budget hearings. If he calls that several, uh, or quite a few, uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, you can make your own judgment. Um, it, it, and then it goes to sort of the uh, ridiculous. Mr. O'Brien, who's not here tonight, said, all of us are concerned about the level of services that the community really, really enjoys. And if you just don't want to vote for the budget, Mr. Harrison, you just don't want to vote for a tax increase, then find a place to hide and quit exaggerating to the public of this town. And I'm, I, I'm not, you know, I call that going to the ridiculous. I don't know what he's suggesting. Uh, clearly, he wasn't very happy with the fact that I didn't agree with the majority of council on this. Uh, he says Harrison talks about earned income versus real estate. We followed his direction over the past and we've had to raise our earned income. Uh, our earned income is high now compared to other communities. Well, I just want to tell you, I'll interject here, that uh, we were supplied with information. I did some additional research. Uh, Peters Township has a 1% earned income. Uh, Mount Lebanon, let's see, let me, uh, uh, Upper St. Clair has a 0 0.8, Mount Lebanon has a 0 0.8, Bethel Park has a 0 0.9, and uh, uh, Whitehall, what did I do with Whitehall? Whitehall has uh, one, I believe. I'll check here very quickly, I should have highlighted it. But the point is that, that you know, there's places of surrounding us. I just looked at the communities that are contiguous to Bethel Park, <laughs> and some of them are higher and some of them are lower. And, and, and so I don't think an increase in the uh, earned income tax is going to make a big difference. I, I'm being told that if we increase the earned income, it's not going to be attractive to people who are looking for a place to, to, uh, to stay, to, to, to buy, to move in. But we've done it years before and uh, I'm not aware of us having a lot of vacant houses that, that aren't moving. Uh, the, um, let me just uh, tell you that uh, Mr. Hannon said, here, here to give you an idea of, of uh, what they think about my position, he says, we were sitting up here uh, knowing that Don is going to vote no, no matter what is in the budget. So he's being disingenuous to the public on how he's going to present this. And it's a situation that in how a politician makes himself look good because he knows that the joint goodness of this council won't make this town go down by attacking a certain aspect. Uh, you know, he, he's, he's saying I'm disingenuous because I don't agree with them on either the increase or the distribution of the increase. Uh, I just want to tell you one other thing that I find interesting, and that is 
that uh, after I spoke against the tax increase and that type thing, uh, then uh, and 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 got these comments of being disingenuous and ought to go find a place to hide and that type thing. Mr. McLean said, I just wanted to note that I think the impression we don't want to leave people with this evening is that this 1.2 mil increase in real estate tax is a done deal and it's over and that's what it's going to be. He further said that I did not want to leave people with the, uh, with the notion it's going to be 1.25 mil increase and it's going to be all on real estate taxes, and that's uh, not done. It's not a done deal. It's not over. And uh, nobody commented on Mr. McLean taking a position that, that he, he said he wouldn't support it. Uh, the other thing I'll just note that he's suggesting that uh, maybe part of the increase would be in a earned income, and, and what we have before us tonight is not the case. So I, uh, I'll be voting against the change and it's because I believe that we ought to take time to let the staff provide us with the numbers just like they did for that spreadsheet so we can look and say what what are the impact in the future because uh, I don't claim to be a, a financial person however if I look and see if we have a 0.95 increase and by 2013, we're going to be 24, 21% less in the reserve we have now. If we go to this lower number, we're, we're going to get there sooner. The number's going to be bigger. And like I say, that's, that, I don't think that's doing the community a very good service. Thank Mr. Meyer. Thank you very much. Mr. Hannon, what I mean by disingenuous is one of those meetings we had sitting in our caucus room, we asked staff to put a list together of things that we don't we can we could not necessarily live with we went through this list of about 15 items and put a consensus on every one of them whether they stay in or stay out and and basically mr harrison knowing that we're got a budget that we were tough he only of the of the 13 or so items he only voted to take out the the fifteen hundred dollars for the veterans lunch and a memorial day Everything else he voted to keep in we the budget. On that. That's what I mean by being disingenuous. Because you come out here in front of these cameras and say one thing to the public, and, and you actually act differently when you're, when you're actually acting as a councilman. Thank you, Mr. Mark. Mr. Mark. Thank you, Mr. Hannon. Mr. Allen. Uh, a couple comments. One thing that uh, Mr. Harrison said was that we continue to have uh, increases over the years. I've been on council 14 years, and we've had two. So. I don't know where the continue to have increases comes from. And to address some of the other uh, points that a couple of the people had mentioned, uh, we're, we're, I'm sure we're not the only one that, that uh, picks up garbage, but there's a lot of communities that charge their residents to have garbage picked up. We, we elect to pick that up ourselves and include it in our operating budget. Uh, next year we're proposing nine hundred thousand dollars to continue with road maintenance and then we usually do between eight and nine hundred thousand a year we could easily cut that off for one year but then what happens one mil increase uh is equivalent to a 1.8 million dollars so if we elected not to to uh put the nine hundred thousand dollars in would only be hurting ourselves in the long run nobody up here likes to increase taxes one bit but sometimes you have to look at the programs we have. We have uh, the 911 downstairs that we have in-house here at Bethel Park. A lot of communities don't do it. We had the opportunity to look at that and see if that's something that we should keep, something that we should outsource to the county, what have you. It's very important to me, and I'm sure most of the people up here, if not all the people, that just the split-second difference between calling Bethel Park for EMS and calling the county for EMS could be, uh, you know, a, a great difference to one of your loved ones. We looked at this thing item by item. We, we're not going to jeopardize the health, safety, and welfare of this community. And that, you know, we're going to continue to do business as usual. The returns that we get, everybody knows that, you know, if you have a banking account, you're lucky to get 0.01 percent. Well, we're hit with that on a large basis. So we're not getting the revenues in that way either. 
I feel comfortable, again, nobody likes a tax increase, but we're going to try the 0.75. We're still, the budget is an ongoing thing. We get reports on a quarterly basis. If we can eliminate things or we can tweak things, we'll certainly do that as we do every year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Is Mr. there any other discussion for Mr. Mr. Mowry? Mr. McLean. Thank you, Mr. Mowry. Um, I just wanted to share with everyone the, uh, the thoughts and the process I went through when we got this budget originally. Um, we were originally presented with a proposed 1.25 mil increase, which struck me as being um, pretty substantial because it was. And so what I did was two things. I uh, talked first with Mr. Romito so that I could understand where those projections had come from and why was it that there was a 1.25 mil increase. And then I was interested in hearing where are our possible reductions so that we can get the expenditures down. What I learned from Mr. Romito is, is that he did a three-year projection. And as he explained, when you do projections that far into the future, you have to be conservative with your projections when you're that far out because you're guessing into the future. So that means that you have a tendency to keep your expenditures down on that projection and to keep your increases up. What I noticed was out in 2014, they were projecting about 14 to 15 percent increases in the expenditures. And I was thinking, I don't think that's what's going to happen. But here's where it gets real. When you take that number that's projected out and then you bring it back to the current time period and you say, now we need a 1.25 mil increase to cover what we're projecting out into the future, now you've turned it into real dollars, real dollars for real people. And I get that, and I understand that, because um, I get that for people on a fixed income, there's lots of things you can do to help yourself. You can turn your thermostat down. You can drive less if the cost of gas goes up, but you can't do anything about that tax bill when it shows up. So when it shows up, you have to pay it. So what I was interested in, is there anything we can do on this side of the table to bring that tax increase down? So the next part of the process was, what reductions can we make in the expenditures? And for me, that was an enlightening process. As has been alluded here tonight, we went through 15 to 20 specific possible things that could be cut. Now, I was there when Mr. Harrison voted to keep nearly every one of those in. I don't criticize him for it. I don't blame him for it, but for me it was enlightening because if Mr. Harrison wasn't going to vote, Mr. Harrison who wants to take as much as he can out of that budget, if he wasn't going to vote to take it out, it means we couldn't take it out. So what we were left with is what are we going to do? Are we going to use three-year projections and hit people with a 1.25 mil increase or are we going to try to bring it down? Now I know staff's preference would be to keep this at 1.25 million. But that difference between 1.25 and 0.75 is $900,000. And my view is, is that I'd rather see that money in the pockets of the people of Bethel Park right now than sitting over here in our accounts. And we'll have to continue to work on bringing the budget down. But that's the approach that I, that I took. Now, the fact that we didn't see a 0.75 until tonight, that doesn't bother me. It's lower than anything we saw before tonight. And what I've been trying to do is see if we can bring that tax down as much as we can. 0.75 is better than 0.95. So I'm in favor of it because at the end of the process that I've gone through, this is a shorter term look. It's the net result of everything that we can do, and it's the best we can do right now. We've got to stay vigilant about keeping control on our costs, and that's part of what this promise is. Because the easiest thing to do would be bite the bullet, get the higher tax increase, and then we don't have to work as hard. But this will make us work hard, it will make staff work hard, and I think that's the right approach. I want to just add one other thing. There's been some discussion about comparison of our earned income tax to some of the other areas. Um, folks should know that our real estate tax millage is one of the lowest in Allegheny County. With this increase, if we do a 0.75 mil increase, we will still be lower than 113 out of 130 communities in Allegheny County. And we will be lower than every single community around us. You can go drive out of Bethel Park in any direction. The real estate tax millage in that community will be higher than what it is in Bethel Park. So this is not wonderful. It's not something we're happy about doing, but it's not something we've taken lightly. It's something we've worked hard at, and I'm convinced is the best we can do. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Is there Mr. any Mr. Harrison. Uh, 
the, the reason I'm going to, I'm going to I just say a couple words, not why I asked for the floor, but I, I just want to speak to something Mr. McLean said. An item which was proposed to uh, move out of the budget was a salt truck recommended by the uh, public work, which is part of a continuing program to make sure our equipment's available for doing the job, the road repair and that type thing. So, see, that's that's the type of thing that I speak to as necessities, and yep, I vote for them. And, and that's why I talk about necessities and niceties. There's many other things that uh, that money spent for in Bethel Park that uh, I don't disagree with the what I'm told is is, is they're really nice. That's why I call them niceties. But in a tight budget period, uh, I think we ought to think about how we could reduce the cost of those or or implement uh, user fees or something like that. But the reason I asked for the floor, uh, probably uselessly, I want to make a motion that we table this item until later in the month, we have to act on it this month, to give the staff an opportunity to provide us with the numbers, just like they provide us with the numbers for all the other millage increases. Thank you. Okay, there's a motion to table on the floor. Is there a second? Hearing none, the tabling motion uh, fails. Is there any other discussion from council? Mr. Meyer? Yeah, just a couple quick things. One is I'm going to talk about uh, the first budget meeting we had. As we got into the list of items, uh, Mr. Harrison had worked with the finance director and right away talked about let's take the 1.25 mil increase and put it all on wage tax. And I thought it was pretty interesting. It would have been... More, I thought more interesting if we talked more about the concept, but he was proposing to raise the wage tax by 0.1 to cover, uh, which some would say means that he supported the tax increase. What that means if you move it to wage tax, some are going to benefit and some are going to be hurt. What it amounts to, and I'm using rough numbers here, is probably 25% of our assessed value in Bethel Park are commercial property owners. We all know the South Hills Village. It's a big parcel, and we derive a lot of real estate uh, revenues out of that uh, South Hills Village. They would get a free ride. Commercial property owners would not be impacted at all. The second part is there's probably roughly 25% of the public that doesn't currently pay earned income tax. So the people who don't file, obviously, it wouldn't affect them at all. And what does that mean to the working families and the people who do pay? It means that it's going to go from the, the 1.25 mil. If, if we looked at Mr. Uh, Ramito's scenario, which Don put together or suggested, it would be uh, go from $12 on an average family if we did the property tax to $18, a 50% increase on the people that paid the earned income. So we struggled with that. We looked at some of our costs and some of us spoke about it. And when you look at two-thirds of our revenue was derived from the earned income tax, we thought that was enough, that if we were going to do anything, we were going to focus really on the uh, uh, doing it on the property tax. And not that we, we were very competitive with that, and not that that's any justification to anybody because we all have to pay it. But I think we made the decision, let's look at the smaller number and adjust it versus touching the larger number is a percentage, and we heard several times the 1.25 mils and a 57%. That is true on that number. You know, some people like to say your taxes are going up 57%, which is simply not true. It was the property tax portion. Uh, to talk a little bit about kind of disingenuous, I guess what frustrates me, and it's not the first time that I've uh, had this conversation about Mr. Harrison, but when we come out here, he's a much different person. When we have to cut, when we were looking at items, whether it's a salt truck, whether it was the holiday party for our municipal staff, uh, the K-9 unit, fireworks, I'll give him credit. Many of these things he wanted to keep in there. At any time, if he had any suggestions, I think he, he owed it to us, owed it to you, the taxpayers, to bring those suggestions to the table, rather than coming out on the floor and saying, I'm not going to vote for this budget, you should have looked deeper. Well. We're all in this together. We as a group survive by compromise, coming up with things to, to, to look at, many ideas, and sometimes talking to the residents. 
You know, many of us spent time, I'll say last Tuesday, talking to many, many residents and, and getting their input and seeing what they want to do. I mean, some of us spend a lot of time out there. Nobody wants to pay higher taxes. Nobody does. But when it comes down to where can we cut, we cut nearly a million last year. How much more can we cut before we start impacting a level of service? And I'll just leave you on one note. It's just one example of uh, Mr. Harrison and his uh, grandstanding or being disingenuous. For several years, he spoke against the development of the recreation addition to the community center. He hasn't voted a budget for I don't know how many years. The last one was when we raised taxes, believe it or not, and you can check the record. Uh, but we all felt the recreation addition was something that, that we, we needed. We had planned for it. We had a revenue stream once we paid off some of our debt. But he spoke about it. I'll give him credit. That's fine. He has his opinion. But yet, when the grand opening came, and, and, and I just happen to have the chronicles here, where's Mr. Harrison on this picture? He's right up front. He voted against it. He talked against it. He spoke against it for many years. But when it came time for the glory and came time for cutting the ribbon and getting your name on a plaque, he was there. Think about it. It, it's, th this process has been, I think, a challenge, but enlightening. It's not over. It's going to continue. But uh, it's difficult to vote for an increase for anybody. But we're doing what we think the best we can do. And it just, it's not over because we vote on it tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Meyer. Any other comments? Mr. Spano, can you please call the roll? Allen. Yes. Dixon? Yes. Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Harrison? No. McLean? Yes. Mowry? Yes. Six. Motion passes 6 1. Mr. Hannon. Uh, the next item is an ordinance establishing the year 2012 budget. I move that we approve the ordinance enacting the year 2012 budget for the municipality of Bethel Park at $31,540,950. Second. There's a motion to second to approve the ordinance enacting the year 2012 budget for the municipality of Bethel Park in the amount of $31,540,950. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Murray. Mr. Harrison. I'll just say that I find it astounding that we can quote the budget after we just lowered the uh, real estate tax. I, I, uh, I don't understand that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrison. Any other discussion from council? Hearing none, Mr. Spagno, would you please call the roll? Dixon? Yes. Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Harrison? No. McLean? Yes. Mowry? Yes. Allen? Yes. Motion passes 6 1. Mr. Hannon? Uh, next item is the approval of retirement. I move that we approve the drop pension retirement election of Police Sergeant Clifford Snitsky with an effective date of October 1st, 2011, in accordance with Ordinance 08 0109. Second. There's a motion and a second that we approve the drop pension retirement election of Police Sergeant Clifford Snitsky with the effective date of October 1st, 2011, in accordance with Ordinance Number 08-10-09. Any discussion of this item? Mr. Spagnol, would you please call the roll? Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Harrison? Yes. McLean? Yes. Mowry? Yes. Allen? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Mr. Hannon. Okay, we have no further items under uh, general policy and finance, Mr. Brett. Thank you, Mr. Hannon. Are there any additional items? Hearing none, can we turn to planning and zoning and Mr. Dixon, and we have no residents signed up to speak. Certainly, Mr. President. We have three items tonight. The first is a resolution to transfer of a liquor license number R16622 by SAWA Steakhouse, Inc. from uh, Munhall Borough into the municipality of Bethel Park into South Hills Village, located on Village Drive. I move that we adopt the resolution approving the request of SAWA Steakhouse, Inc. for a transfer of liquor license number R16622 <clears throat> from Munhall Borough into the municipality of Bethel Park into tenant space located in the South Hills Village Mall, Unit 200C, 2000C, thank you for the correction, sir, 
located on Village Drive, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Second. There's a motion and second. We adopt the resolution approving the request of SAWA Steakhouse, Inc. for the transfer of liquor license number R-16622 from Munhall Borough into the municipality of Bethel Park into tenant space located at South Hills Village Mall, unit number 2000C, located on Village Drive, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Any discussion of this item? We have a new restaurant coming into the village. Mr. Spagnuolo, please call the roll. Hannon. Yes. Harrison. Yes. McLean. Yes. Mowry. Yes. Allen. Yes. Dixon. Yes. Gibbons. Yes. Seven zero. Motion passes seven zero. Mr. Dixon. Uh, second item is a resolution for the transfer of liquor license number <laughs> R one nine six four three by Jeff Wilkins LLC from the municipality of Penn Hills into the municipality of Bethel Park into facilities located at 5001 Library Road. I move that we adopt the resolution approving the request of Jeff Wilkins LLC for a transfer of liquor license number R19643 from the municipality of Penn Hills into the municipality of Bethel Park and facilities located at Shop and Save located at 5001 Library Road, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Second. There's a motion and second. We adopt a resolution approving the request of Jeff Wilkins, LLC, for the transfer of liquor license number R-19643 from the municipality of Penn Hills into the municipality of Bethel Park into facilities located at Shop and Save, located at 5001 Library Road, Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. One quick comment. We're required by law to have public hearings and adopt this for liquor license but in essence for the application to make it to our level it already met the state requirements so there's nothing we can do to change it we're just required to have the public hearing in the past we have opposed one we were taken to court and lost so it's more just a notification process mr uh Spagnol, would you please call the roll harrison yes mclean yes mowry yes Allen? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Givens? Yes. Him? Yes. Motion passes 7 0, Mr. Dixon. Third item is application number 20110955, CSS Plan of Lots, Major Subdivision, 2590 Summit Street, Two Lot Subdivision, Carol S. Stewart, applicant. I move that we approve application number 2011. 0955 CSS Plan of Lots, Major Subdivision, 2590 Summit Street, Two Lot Subdivision, Carol S. Stewart Applicant, in accordance with the Municipal Engineer's Correspondence, dated November 9, 2011. Second. There's a motion and a second. We approve application number 2011-0955-CSS Plan of Lots, Major Subdivision, 2590 Summit Street, Two Lot Subdivision, Carol S. Stewart Applicant, in accordance with Municipal Engineer's Correspondence, dated November 9, 2011. I just have a question. This includes the sidewalk delay agreement? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other discussion from Council? Hearing none, Mr. Spagnuolo, would you please call the roll? McLean? Yes. Mowry? Yes. Allen? Yes. Dixon? Yes. Gibbons? Yes. Hannon? Yes. Harrison. Yes. Motion passes 7-0, Mr. Dixon. We have no more items under planning and zoning tonight, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Are there additional items? Hearing none, we turn to health, safety, and welfare, and Mr. McLean. Thank you, Mr. President. We have no items under health, safety, and welfare this evening. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Are there any additional items? Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mayor. Mayor? I have one, one thing. These, these envelopes that, that I have came from uh, Pastor Stepp. And if anybody happens to know a family that could benefit from this, this is an application that has all the information they need to take advantage of getting their gifts for their children. The library has some of those. Also. You have some of these too? That's good. They're available in the library as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Morton. Mr. McLean. Yes, just real briefly, end of a longer than usual meeting. Um, a couple people I spoke to recently asked me to remind everyone that we are a recycling community. And if you are recycling, thank you. Uh, if you're not, please consider doing it. Um, you can use the orange and black crates if you have them, but if you don't, uh, that's not an excuse. You can put uh, them out in anything that is visibly marked recyclable. You can use a regular trash can and they'll pick them up. 
If you need to know what can go into recycling and what can't, it's on the website, or you could call the municipality and find out. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Barry. Mr. Harrison. Uh, uh, I guess Jerry Duke would better know, but it seems to me, based on my observations, that uh, lots of people in Bethel Park are recycling uh, cans, bottles, and that type thing. Yeah. But I also observe that not many people are recycling their paper, their newspapers, and uh, should shouldn't we be doing that? As yes. Well, we we've had an increase in uh, paper and cardboard over the last few years as the program has uh, been enhanced by our contract of waste management. Um, there has also been a, we've seen a large increase in the commercial recycling or institutional. As you notice, there's a number of places around, such as the churches and the schools have had paper drop-off places. So we've seen an increase of that. So I would say overall, our paper has been up. Is it where we'd like to be? Of course, we'd like to have everything recycled, but uh, um, you know, it's, it, there are many options out there for people if they don't put it on the curb, they're maybe putting it in, in those dumpsters. So we appreciate them doing that. So. Wasn't there a state law enacted that mandated that these businesses recycle? Yeah, uh, institutional uh, are required to, to do it. Commercial uh, institutions are required to do it. They're, uh, they give us reports at the end of the year uh, th at which we turn over to the state and then we get uh, some of the money back from a landfill tipping fee to help support our program now. It's not very much, it's been, but it's been enough to, uh, you know, every little bit helps, so. Thank you, Mr. Duke and Mr. Harrison. Are there any additional items? Can we turn to public works and maintenance? And I don't know what happened to Mr. O'Brien. We sent him out on Halloween, <laughs> and we did have the little identification lights on him, but he never came home, so. <laughs> I told him I was gonna do that, by the way. Uh, Mr. Allen. Uh, Mr. Meyer, we have no items this evening under public works and maintenance. Thank you, Mr. Ellen. Are there any additional items? Mr. Mr. Harrison? Mr. Meyer, I would like to request that the manager direct the finance officer to provide us with the numbers that would go into this table for this uh, uh, approved millage. You know, we, we, we have everything from 1.25 to 0.95. I'd like to see the set of numbers that fit into this table, the one today that I talked to you about, uh, Mr. Romito. You All know right. what I'm asking? There, there, there's a set of numbers that that uh, correspond to the uh, approved millage tonight. I'd like to get those so I can put them in my computer. I think as you had the municipality print that out for you to make copies today, you can make a similar request to Mr. Romito tomorrow. I'm quite sure he would be more than happy to uh, take care of that. Is there any additional items? Hearing none, is motion Move to adjourn. adjourn. Second, adjourn. all in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone.
may all your Christmases be white. everyone in a minute do I have to do everything myself you can't do it all by yourself um, I have to say that sure I can I no he can't and neither can I so why don't you come on down to BPTV and help us make some of the great community programs you see on this station every day yeah I mean we can help you make your TV show ideas a reality. It's pretty awesome. So, come on down. I mean, I am pretty good. But I'm sure I can use your help. in the box. His 
Shiv. 